welcome parents, guardians, and students, and thank you so much for attending tonight's Grade 8 Open House at Huron. I'm Kylie, and I've been a part of the Student Council, Athletic Council, and various sports around the school. And thank you so much for becoming familiar with the programs and courses that Huron offers and all the things that make it such a unique, creative, and great school. Now to start off the night, we would like to acknowledge that we are all treaty people and acknowledge that the York Region District School Board is located on the lands of two treaties. These treaties are signed with the Mississaugas of Credit First Nations and the First Nations of the Williams Treaties, who are the Mississaugas of Alderville, Curve Lake, Kawatha, Skookog Island, and the Chippewas of Buswale. Rama and Georgina Island, our closest neighbor and partner in education. To honor this agreement, we will take up our responsibility to re be respectful of their traditions, knowledge, and inherit rights as sovereign nations. We will respect the relationship with these lands and recognize that our connection to the land is through the continued relationship with these First Nations. And we acknowledge our shared responsibility to respect and care for the land and waters for future generations. And now I would have the pleasure of introducing Mr. Gordon, who is the current principal of Huron Heights to say a few words. Hello, I am Eric Gordon, principal here at Huron Heights. Welcome. Welcome to Huron and our grade eight information presentation. Although this format continues to look different than it has in the years past, I trust you will still hear from our students and our staff just how proud we are of our program and our community. During this presentation, we expect that you will learn about the rich and diverse range of courses and programs that we offer. Whether you're a student or a family member, we trust that you will be able to see yourself as part of our Huron community. We are so very proud of our students and our staff and our program that it is always exciting for us to welcome new students and new families into our community. So welcome, and please enjoy this presentation. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. And now cont to continue, here are some general information to help you get familiar with Huron Heights. So our school first opened in 1962, and it's a semestered school, which means that there's four courses per semester. So semester one is September through January, semester two being February through June. So the regular school year start time is 9:10 and ends at 341. The regional arts program is Arts Huron, which is our pride and joy of the school. It's very, very cool. And one of the largest technology programs in the board is right here at Huron. We have a variety of special education programs, also comprehensive personalized alternative education programs, or a PAE, and our graduating students pursue a variety of post-secondary destinations, such as apprenticeships, colleges, universities, and in the workplace. But when it comes to experience learning, our school offers a variety of pathways and rich learning experiences, which may include Arts Huron, which is currently 240 students from grade 9 to 12, and our SHSM program, which is Specialist High Skills Major. It has six sectors with 80 students registered currently. Also at Huron, we have some Exploring Opportunities programs, the Social Justice Certificate, the co-op education, personalized alternative learning, college delivered dual credit courses, York Region skills challenges, academic applied locally developed pathways, and First Nations, Métis, and Inuit studies. Now, thank you, and I would like to introduce Abigail to present the next few slides. Hi, my name is Abby Timbers, and I am a senior at Huron Heights. I'm currently the co-president of our fantastic drama council, and I'm here to talk to you about how you can get involved. So what you see on the slide is a list of the wide variety of councils, clubs, and groups that run at Huron Heights. Each of these offer excellent opportunities to get involved, to make a difference, and to develop your leadership skills. Truly, I've been involved since grade nine, and I love it because you make so many friends. You learn a lot about yourself and the others around you, and you get to help out people at the same time. And as members of these clubs and groups at Huron, you will have the opportunity to be involved in various community outreach activities such as the holiday community dinner, night at the riverboat, or the New Market Santa Claus Parade, which we're already getting ready for now. And remember, it is never too early to get involved. At Huron, we pride ourselves on our fantastic Arts Huron program, which focuses on student development and expression through dance, theater, music, and visual arts. Personally, I am a double major. I am 
a vocal. I am in the vocal and theater program. Since grade nine, I started in vocal, and grade 10, I started in theater. Um, as you can see, once you do more research into our program, you can see that being a single, a double, or a triple major is actually a very accessible and fantastic opportunity for students who want to explore different aspects of their interest in the arts. And something I love about the program, which is truly my favorite part, is you are surrounded by people who understand you and who share the same interests as you. Um, and it's a sense of family that I don't think I would have gotten anywhere else. I truly feel accepted and supported when I walk through the doors of the Greenhouse Theater or our amazing instrumental room. And everyone is there with open arms helping you and supporting you and praising you because you are learning but you are also learning about yourself and the others around you and it's truly an amazing experience um, students can apply through the online application and are admitted through an audition process there is a 25 non-refundable application fee and throughout their four years of high school students will take seven courses in their major and one other art course which would be considered their inside out so for example, if you're in the vocal program, but you're very interested in stage management or how to act, you would take your inside out in the theater, maybe in grade 10 or grade 11, and you would learn about those different aspects and maybe you'd want to join the program. But it's truly a great opportunity to jump outside of your comfort zone and meet these new opportunities and skills. Um, there is a curriculum fee of $100 per year, and this fee goes directly to the program to enhance it. Um, on November 29th, we are offering an audition prep and Q&A session in order to workshop your skills to be prepared for your audition. And applications for the next school year, so 2022 to 2023, must be completed between November 10th and December 6th. And if for following information, you can go to the Arts Huron section of the Huron's website on YRDSB for complete details. If you are interested in sports and athletics, don't go yet because we are extremely proud of our athletics program. Um, and looking at this list of sports, I'm sure something will look of interest to you. Typically over 400 students are involved in co-curricular activities each year at Huron and we love every second of it. What is STEAM and how can you experience it at Huron? Well, STEAM is not a program, but rather an interdisciplinary approach to learning where academic concepts are coupled with real world lessons. Students apply science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and the arts in contexts that make connections between the classroom and the world around them. STEAM education teaches students to take thoughtful risks, engage in experiential learning, work through the creative process, persist in problem solving, and embrace collaboration. Examples of STEAM opportunities at Huron Heights include robotics courses, curriculum-based student inquiry projects, construction projects, coding, Skills Canada activities, and 3D printing. Now I would love to introduce you to my good friend Peyton who will cover the next few topics. Bye! Thanks Abby. Hi everyone, I'm Peyton Morrison. I am the other co-president of the Drama Council. No. Thank you, Abby. Hi everyone, my name is Peyton Morrison. I'm a grade 12 student at Huron. I am the other co-president of the Drama Council and I'm also a co-captain of the Huron cheerleading team. And I wanted to talk to you today about some of our departments at Huron. You can find information on our school website about the different departments and the courses they offer. Take some time to explore the Departments tab and become familiar with the courses that are offered at each grade level. If you need further information, please contact the subject head directly. This information can be found on the Huron Heights website under the School Information tab, and then access the Our Staff section. Thanks, Abby. Hi everyone, my name is Peyton Morrison. I'm a grade 12 student at Huron. I am the other co-president of the Drama Council. As well, I'm the co-captain of the Huron Cheerleading Team. And I wanted to spend some time today to talk about our departments at Huron. You can find information on our school website about the different departments and the courses they offer. Take some time to explore the Departments tab and become familiar with the courses that are offered at each grade level. If you need further information, please contact the subject head directly. 
This information can be found on the Huron Heights website under the School Information tab and then access the Our Staff section. Huron Heights cares. We are committed to the success of all of our students and strive to create a welcoming and inclusive environment by providing relevant and experiential learning opportunities, building on students' interests and strengths, supporting effective transitions, and working towards a successful graduation, and staff who work one-on-one -on -one with students to provide additional supports at Huron, which includes student success programs, special education, English as a second language, our guidance department, personalized alternative education, educational assistance and child and youth workers, and our administration. Additional school programs that support students include our breakfast program, Wellness Wednesdays, and self-help groups. In our special education programs, Every identified student is assigned a special education resource teacher who is responsible for connecting with the student and their parents and creating the individual education plan. Students receive support according to the needs outlined in their IEP. All teachers have access to the accommodations on the IEP. The special education resource teacher will support the student and their subject teachers throughout the semester. And identified students also have access to the resource room for further accommodations, such as assignment clarification, verbatim reading, or quiet alternative space in which to work. In our ESL and ELD support programs, Learning opportunities to enable students to develop facilities in English are integrated into the curriculum in all subject areas. We offer English as a second language credit courses at all five levels. A maximum of three English as a second language credits can be used toward the four compulsory English credits that are required for graduation. The remaining compulsory credit must be earned at the grade 11 or 12 level. If your child would benefit from an ESL support at high school, please contact the guidance department. And now I would like to introduce Mrs. Wendy Cordes, the head of guidance at Huron Heights Secondary School. She will be speaking to the next slides, which will all address some important questions you may have regarding graduation requirements, course selections, and the steps required for registration. Thank you. As Peyton mentioned, my name is Wendy Cordes and I'm the Head of Guidance at Huron Heights Secondary School. I'm going to spend the next few minutes speaking to you regarding graduation requirements and selecting Grade 9 courses. In order to graduate from high school, students must complete what is called their OSSD or Ontario Secondary School Diploma. The requirements include finishing 18 compulsory credits, 12 optional credits, completing the literacy test, and 40 hours of community involvement. This chart provides a more detailed look at the requirements for obtaining your OSSD. The 18 compulsory courses are outlined in more detail, including the group 1, 2, and 3, which include a little bit of variety or selection for students in order to complete these requirements. Of special note, students must complete four credits in English, that is one credit per grade, three credits in math, including one at the senior level, and they must also complete one credit in the arts. It is suggested that students complete this credit in either grade nine or 10. In addition to the traditional drama, visual arts, music, and dance courses, the grade nine expressing Aboriginal cultures course may also be used to meet the compulsory credit requirement in the arts. Students must also complete one credit in French as a second language, which will be discussed in more detail shortly. As mentioned previously, all students must successfully meet the literacy requirements in order to graduate. The grade 10 literacy test is traditionally written in the spring of a student's grade 10 year. 
The test is based on grade 9 curriculum expectations from across the curriculum, not just English courses. And the test will serve both to determine whether students have acquired the reading and writing skills considered essential for literacy. If students attempt the test and are unsuccessful, they may write the test again the following year, or they may enroll in a literacy course in order to meet this literacy test requirement. There are multiple opportunities in place to ensure that a student successfully meets this requirement for graduation. As mentioned previously, another requirement for graduation is completing 40 hours of community involvement. Activities may be completed at any time in the summer of grade 8 and during a student's years in the secondary school program. They may take place at a variety of settings, for example, not-for-profit organizations, public sector institutions such as hospitals, and informal settings. Students may not fulfill the requirement through activities that they are counting towards a credit through paid work or by assuming duties normally performed by a paid employee. The hours are to be be completed outside a student's normal instructional hours. They can be in lunch hours, after school, on weekends, or during school holidays. Completion of the required hours may be confirmed by the organization or the person supervising the activities. For further information about what is allowed for community involvement, please consult the board website where there is a list of things that are approved and not approved activities. Now that we have determined what is needed to graduate, let's talk about making course decisions for grade 9. There are different types of courses in grade 9 and 10. They are applied, academic, open, locally developed, and most recently, de-streamed. This year, math was moved to a de-streamed type of course, meaning that students no longer select between academic and applied, all students take de-streamed math. Other courses potentially will move this way for the 22-23 school year. For example, science may no longer have applied and academic courses, but will be under the de-streamed model, meaning that all students will select science as a de-streamed course. We are awaiting information from the ministry currently that will outline if all grade 9 courses will be moving towards de-streamed courses or if some will still have students selecting between the applied and academic courses. On the next slide, we will discuss in more detail what is the difference between these types of courses. Applied courses focus on the essential concepts of a subject and develop students' knowledge and skills through practical applications and concrete examples. Familiar situations are used to illustrate ideas and students are given more opportunities to experience hands-on applications of the concepts and theories they study. Currently, applied courses are offered in science, math at the grade 10 level, English, French, geography, and history. The maximum number of students in an applied class is 22. Academic courses develop students' knowledge and skills through the study of theory and abstract problems. These courses focus on the essential concepts of a subject and explore related concepts as well. They incorporate practical applications as appropriate. Academic courses are also offered in the English, French, geography, history, science, and math at the grade 10 level. The maximum number of students in an academic class is 29. Locally developed courses may be developed by a board for grade 9 or 10 students to accommodate educational and or career preparation needs that are not met through courses within the provincial curriculum policy documents. These courses provide the opportunity to develop, enhance, and practice literacy and numeracy skills. In grade nine, locally developed courses are offered in math, science, and English. The maximum number of students in a locally developed class are 16. 
Open courses comprise a set of expectations that are appropriate for all students, are designed to broaden students' knowledge and skills in subjects that reflect their interests and prepare them for active and rewarding participation in society. Students will take open courses in areas such as physical health and education, the arts, and technology. DStream classes no longer separate courses into academic and applied streams. Research shows that DStreaming results in better outcomes for students and particularly for those who are from marginalized communities. Mathematics was DStreamed for the first time in the 21-22 school year. A DStream mathematics class prepares students for university, college, apprenticeship, and workplace pathways. Other compulsory courses may become de-streamed for the 22-23 school year, and we will ensure that families are notified if this occurs. The maximum size in a de-stream class currently is 25 students. French is one of Canada's official languages and is therefore recognized and valued as an integral component of Ontario's education system. The vision of the French program in Ontario is that students will communicate and interact with growing confidence in French. French is considered a mandatory subject for students in grades four to nine. And of course, students are encouraged to continue studying French in grades 10 to 12. Grade 9 French is offered at the open level for students who are new to Canada and those students who have had less than 600 hours of instruction in French. How do you choose what type of course is best for you in Grade 9? Keep in mind that applied, academic, and de-stream courses are all equally rigorous and all course pathways prepare the student for the next level of high school. Decisions about courses need to be made based on the best style of learning for the student. Families and students are encouraged to consult with their elementary school teachers, guidance counselors, and support staff in order to decide about which type of course is best for their style of learning. Students may choose a combination of courses to support their different learning styles within the different types of disciplines. For example, a student may take DStream Math, Applied Science, Academic English, and Academic French a combination of courses that best suits their learning style. Remember that initial decisions made in grade eight are not final decisions. There are many pathways to initial post-secondary destinations. In order to meet graduation requirements, it is strongly recommended that students take the following six courses, English, Math, Science, French, Geography, Health and Physical Education in Grade 9. In addition, students will take two elective courses. When they are completing their course selection, they will also be asked to supply two alternative courses in case these two elective courses cannot be timetabled. In addition to the six compulsory courses listed on the previous slide, students will select two elective courses. The elective courses at Huron Heights include technology, business, the arts, learning strategies, social sciences and humanities, and computer studies. As you will see on the slide, there are several different options for the technological education courses. Each are offered as a half credit so that students may experience learning in more than one area. For example, the initial course code TCJ102 is grade nine open construction. We also have tech design, communication technology, manufacturing tech, precision machining and welding, transportation and cosmetology. Cosmetology or hairstyling and aesthetics is the only course under the technologies which is a full credit course. 
Under the arts, students may select from visual arts, drama, music, and dance. Students may choose a ninth credit if they choose to take instrumental or vocal repertoire. How do you read a course code? The first three letters of the code indicate the department. For example, in the first code listed, ENG1D1, ENG stands for the English department. The first number indicates the grade level. For example, 1 equals grade 9, 2 is for grade 10, and so on. The next letter indicates the type of course. D stands for academic, P is applied, W is de-streamed, L is for locally developed, and O is for open courses. The final number or letter indicates school-specific criteria. For example, M is used for Arts Huron courses. Only students accepted into the Arts Huron course should be using courses that end or selecting courses that end in the letter M. Eight and nine are used specifically for girls or boys phys ed. Generally, students will be choosing a course that ends in a one. If there is a letter on the end of the course code, for example, N or A, there is a reason and students will be instructed to select these courses only if required. How do you read a timetable? You will receive a timetable indicating your courses for both semesters at the end of August. Your courses in semester one will run from September until the end of January, and courses in semester two will run from February until the end of June. Typically, each semester ends with either culminating assignments or exams in each of your courses. You will take four courses in each semester. When you get your timetable, it is important to review the courses that are listed to ensure the correct course type and grade level. Your timetable will include the following information. Homeroom. In this example, homeroom begins at 8.50. Students are expected to be in class prior to the start of homeroom. Then for each of the periods, you will receive a course code and section. For example, in period two, this student has PPL 108, grade nine girls phys ed. The name of the teacher and classroom will also be included. In this example, it is Mr. Bolt and the class is room 10. Classes and lunch are 75 minutes in length. Typically, all grade nine students have lunch in period three. Some courses such as instrumental and vocal repertoire can be scheduled either before or after the regular school day. If this applies to you, your teachers will provide you with more information about the start and end times for these courses. A quick note about planning ahead for grades 10 to 12. In planning for high school, here are some important points that students and families should consider to make informed decisions when completing course requests throughout high school. Consider prerequisites for future courses. For example, if you plan to take grade 11 university biology, you must take a grade 10 academic science. Be informed about experiential learning opportunities available. For example, cooperative education and specialist high skills major. Our school website provides additional information related to both of these opportunities and many more. Be aware of the admission requirements for post-secondary opportunities. Many college, apprenticeship and university programs require specific grade 12 courses. All students must prepare for the school to work transition by selecting courses that meet both graduation requirements and effectively prepare them for life after high school. 
Courses in post-secondary pathways are changeable and flexible as you progress through high school and beyond. Students should stay open-minded to all opportunities, including but not limited to college, international travel and education, university, private training, apprenticeship, and work. As part of the planning process, you need to be aware of the 34 credit threshold. With appropriate planning and support, the majority of Ontario students will finish secondary school, graduate, and make the transition to their next steps in four years. Students may take as many courses as they wish within the first four years of high school. Some students will, however, choose to return for an additional semester or year. Students will need to plan carefully, keeping in mind that they can only remain for a maximum of 34 credits in high school. Students with an IEP are exempt from this 34 credit threshold. English as a second language courses are not included within this limit. Questions surrounding either of these scenarios should be directed to your guidance counselor. How do you complete the course selection process? Students will select their courses using the Pathway Planner if they are currently registered in a York Region District School Board Elementary School. The Pathway Planner can be found on the York Region District School Board website under the Online Student Tools. Students at schools within our boundaries will receive an additional in-class presentation regarding the specifics of course selection. Students not currently registered in York Region District School Board will submit a registration package along with their course selections. Students will be then contacted for a registration appointment and course review. Students will select eight courses in total. Six of these courses are compulsory courses and two are elective courses. An additional presentation regarding the process for course selection can be found under the Guidance tab Grade 8 Information section on the Huron Heights website. Parents and students are welcome to contact guidance with any course specific or registration questions. For information on YRDSB provided transportation eligibility, bus routes, stop locations, times, and general information, please visit the Student Transportation Services website listed on this slide. Students who live outside the Huron Heights Secondary School boundaries will be required to provide their own transportation to and from school. For more information regarding school boundaries, access the School Locator on the York Region District School Board website. Students applying to the Arts Program may be eligible for transportation. Contact the Huron Heights Secondary School main office if you require additional information. I would now like to introduce you to Mr. Corey MacArthur, one of our school's three vice principals, to speak about the one-to-one -one digital technology program. Thank you, Wendy, for that introduction. Once again, my name is Corey MacArthur, and I'm one of the vice principals here at Huron Heights Secondary School. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, Huron Heights started the process to become a one-to-one -one digital technology school. This launch was put on hold as both Huron Heights and families were required to focus on the pandemic. Now that we are working our way back to a new normal, September 2022 will be the official launch of the Huron Heights Secondary School one-to-one -one digital technology program. All incoming grade 9 students will be required to bring in their own Wi-Fi enabled device, specifically a Chromebook or a laptop, to use as part of an enhanced blended learning environment. The program will expand each year for four years so that by September of 2025, all grades from 9 through 12 will be participating in the one-to-one -one digital technology program. The decision to adopt a one-to-one -one digital technology program is driven by the desire to support the promotion of productive lifelong learning. Critical to this approach is consistent access to technology, which allows teachers to support students as they explore concepts and ideas, 
collaborate with peers, teachers, and the community, communicate their insights and understanding, practice important academic skills, and to curate a record of their academic progress and accomplishments. A one-to-one -one computing environment has a positive effect on student learning as it puts students more in control of their own education. One of the biggest benefits is the ability to connect students' learning with real-world applications. Through blended programming and a focus on improving student learning, our goal is to provide an environment that allows students to move from being consumers of technology to creators with technology. We are excited to share this journey with you and will be providing more information to families in the spring. I would like to pass the presentation back to Wendy Cordes, the Department Head of Guidance, to cover some important dates that all students and families need to be aware of as they work towards registering for high school and selecting courses. Wendy, back to you. Finally, what are the important dates around course selection? Students currently in a York Region District School Board French Immersion Program will automatically be mapped to the French Immersion High School in their area based on their home address. If you wish to no longer enroll in this program and instead attend the home high school based on the student's current address on record, you must inform the current elementary school in writing prior to the start of February course selection. Please speak to your elementary school regarding this process. It is important to ensure that the current correct home address is on file at the elementary school to ensure students are correctly mapped to the correct home high school. Non-York Region District School Board students planning to attend Huron Heights should submit their registration package, course requests, and transfer paperwork if this is required to the main office at Huron Heights prior to February 25th. Parents or guardians and students will be required to complete an intake interview with administration to finalize the registration and course selection process. For current York Region District School Board students, request to transfer must be submitted to your home elementary school by February the 4th, and students will be informed by February 11th as to whether the transfer process has been approved or not. By Wednesday, February 25th, all York Region District School Board students must have submitted their course selections on the Pathway Planner. For more information, please visit the Huron Heights Secondary School website under the Guidance tab, then click on the Grade 8 Information section. We will be updating this section as additional information becomes available. Also, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. We hope you have found this information useful. If you have additional questions, please see the Contact Us tab in the guidance section of the Huron Heights website, where you can find our direct emails and phone numbers. If you have more specific questions, we would be happy to speak with you after this presentation on the guidance Zoom link. Thank you again for joining us.